Okay, so the old uh, toy kit came in handy. I got myself a uh, PC-based oscilloscope because so I wanted to play with an oscilloscope really badly and I couldn't afford the $400 Rigel that I want to buy right now. Um, and my $20 analog project may or may not ever come along. I'm, uh, I've bought a few pieces and parts for it that I'm going to try putting on and see what I can do. But uh, anyway, I was impatient. And I felt like I'd earned some money because I, you know, did a repair job around here that saved us some bucks. So, a little reward to myself. 60 bucks. And in a, uh, in a way, it's a $50 oscilloscope with 10 bucks worth of leads because it comes with a set of these guys that uh, I happened, <laughs> I bought a set of these almost identical. There's two of them in the kit. I just happen to have one out right now. Um, but, uh, you know, when I bought this and I wanted to test it out, I, I went on the web and, and got a set of test leads. Uh, almost, again, they had to come out of the same factory. Um, and they cost me at least 10, maybe 10 to 15 bucks. I don't remember what shipped to the door. <clears throat> well, if I bought this to begin with, it came with the leads. And, you know, they used the same, what are they called, BNC connector, I forget. This is standard. So, could have used these across either one of these. So, depending how you look at it, a 50-ish oscilloscope with a $10 set of leads or a $60 oscilloscope. Here it is, connected to my old XP laptop, which uh, I refuse to relinquish, even though Microsoft says I'm going to you know, be eaten by aliens if I continue to use. Um, so, how'd this guy come in to the rescue? I tried to do the thing... Uh, where you uh, download an app to your phone, which um, I did. So if I can get it up, up again. Let's see, here we go. And it's called a. Do 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 signal generator, I believe. Yeah, there it is. So, uh,. Thing's pretty cool. So the idea was something like this: is that you would uh, tap your earphone jack. Um, Cut the wires and everything, you should be able to read the, the signal in there. Something in the way that I'm stripping the wire, I mean those little teeny wires that come with the earbuds uh, are tricky. So something in the way that I'm stripping those, I'm not getting a good signal out here. So I uh, I know the thing's working because it has a, uh, there's a test uh, square wave generator here that you use to calibrate your test probes. It has a little adjustment pot right in there. So you, you generate your square wave, uh, and it's a bit pointy. And so you uh, adjust your, um, I don't know what it would be. It's down in there. Um, to get the squarest wave you can. And then your probe is calibrated. So that worked fine and I was worried that I wasn't able to get what I wanted off of the phone. Anyway, I remembered, oh yeah, I got this little thing. And sure enough, it's got a sine wave audio oscillator circuit you can build. So I did. And lo and behold, there we go. Can you hear that? Um, fun to play with. And... I've discovered uh, some of the uh, functionality of this uh, scope. When you first boot it up, you just see the screen itself. And it's 
something like that. That's the first few you get. And so um, I knew that, you know, the Rigels and stuff that I've seen folks use on the web had a lot more information on the screen. And I just found out that, oh, yeah, I can go up here and use the measure window. And I get to see things like, you know, the frequency and so forth. Um, what's interesting in this case is this circuit's supposed to operate at 400 hertz, and it is operating. I get it to like four, close to 400, but that's in the distorted range. And according to this, when I tune it down to the clean side wave, just before it cuts out altogether, that's supposed to be 400 hertz, and that is actually more like a thousand, almost. Um, a thousand hertz. It's exa almost exactly. I'm talking down to the the thousands. Um, I mean, down to the hertz, down to the cycle per second. Um, it's 1.002 modulating to six kilohertz. So, hmm, who knows? Something to figure out. Now that I'm using this. Uh, probe here that I, or set of leads that I bought, these do not have, they're, they're convenient because they have alligator clips, but they do not have the ability to calibrate them the way the others do. Now for this particular circuit I actually tried both of them and I didn't see any difference. Um, so I guess it's probably when you're getting down to much uh, more delicate circuitry that that uh, calibration comes into play. Anyway, I thought this was cool. I'm uh, pressing on with my rediscovery of electronics, you know, 30 odd years after I abandoned it. Fun stuff. Alright, another little silly thing. Um, it occurred to me that I'm looking at, uh, when I'm looking at the voltage, I'm looking at the RMS, root mean square voltage here. So. Another thing you're getting out of uh, your little $50, $60 investment here is an RMS voltmeter. So, my Fluke, this is the 15B, the cheaper version. Um, good lord, my dogs are going crazy. Hang on, let me see what's going on. Alright, I'm back. Had a little dog emergency there. Yeah, so what I was saying was, Hey, I've got an RMS voltmeter, which, you know, in the form of a oscilloscope, um, which I haven't had before, because this, uh, this 15B+, plus, uh, this is the one you can get for like 90 bucks, Chinese made for the Chinese market, and uh, it's a great little multimeter, but it's not RMS, uh, so I wondered what the difference would be. And in this particular case, there honestly wasn't that much. 521 volts, same 0.521 volts is saying right there. And whoops. Sorry, I'm trying to hold this and look over there at the same time. Without losing that guy. Should I get this? Held somewhat stable fashion. There we go. 520, 521. And what I'm seeing over there on the oscilloscopes, too small for you to read, I'm sure, it's saying 524 millivolts, which is the same thing. So we're getting down to like 3 millivolts difference between the RMS reading and the, uh, the straight AC reading. Interesting, I guess. All right, one last thing. I want to run this one more time just to, uh, for comparison purposes, so you can watch the waveform as it gets to the distorted end. Because I decided the next circuit I'm going to build is the low distortion sine wave oscillator. So that's a fairly good looking little sine wave there. 
but it starts distorting as I adjust it to almost a sawtooth. So that's the transformer-based sine wave oscillator. The low distortion sine wave oscillator does not use a transformer and therefore it's supposed to be low distortion. So that's the next thing I'm going to build. Give it a check see. Yes, this is Friday night. This is my Friday night. Don't get old. All right, now a little bit of silliness. I was dismantling things and I was reminded again that this thing is never sitting exactly still unless you ground out the connectors. There's always this transient stuff going on. Um, and you see the same thing with a uh, regular old voltmeter, digital voltmeter, when you've uh, got an AC mode. And I believe it's just, you know, transient in the air. With, in the case of this guy, since he's tied into the grid through the um, laptop, that, uh, you know, there can be noise actually traveling through the system that it's reading. And as a matter of fact, when you look at the frequency, it does want to hover right around 60 hertz. So that's a pretty good indicator. Well, here's something I thought would be interesting. Let's connect these together. Now, the fluke settles on 0.2 volts. My RMS Oh. oh crap, it wasn't that close before, it was, I mean, in fact it was really far apart. Now it's looking really close. It's changed to, depending on where you move it around. Pick up stray inductive currents and whatnot. But, alright, it's making a liar out of me. They're not too far off right now. I'm reading 100, you know, 0 0.13, 143 volts on the fluke, and I'm reading 174 millivolts. So, off by 30 millivolts. My peak to peak on the oscilloscope is 800 and some millivolts. That's interesting. When I did this earlier, I was getting an actual, not a fraction of a volt, I was getting a volt or two. And then it, the RMS was showing up as millivolts. So there was this huge difference in the two. So I wanted to show that. And of course, I did something different. Maybe it's because I set this over here for purposes of demonstration. And it's climbing over here. And I'm still kind of keeping track of what's going on over there. Alright. More random stuff. Alright guys, so here we go. We have built the low distortion sine wave oscillator. Put it in there which differs from the sine wave audio oscillator that we built previously in that it does not use a transformer and therefore is supposed to <clears throat> have less distortion and this one's keyed and I don't know if you will be able to hear through this where's my microphone on this bad boy
So this is kind of cool because you can actually vary the frequency. I hope you can hear that. I don't actually know where my, my microphone is, so... Let's see if we get prettier sine waves out of this arrangement. Damn it. What is this? Oh, yeah. That ought to work. Ready? Here we go. There is a lag. Oh, that doesn't look prettier to me. That does not look like more of a sine wave than we had previously. In fact, that looks chopped. I've been lied to. <laughs> That's not a sine wave. That's half a sine wave. That's a sine ave. You can't read down here the frequency, but I'm watching it. And we're going from a high. Oop. Off the scale there. Okay, we went high about 310 hertz down to a low of about 150 hertz. So it's basically a, a doubling or having from one end of the variable resistor to the other. Voltage is staying fairly constant. Peak to peak in RMS. Around 4 volts RMS, 5.15 peak to peak. So you have very, very clean in that regard. Interesting. Well, there you go. Fun stuff. Now, somewhere in this town, I'm pretty certain, this being Friday night, there's a guy that's got more than $50 on his bar tab. Hello guys. This is, uh, this was my problem. I was using these, uh, straight one-to-one -one leads, which I think I'm going to have to be very, very careful about using. Maximum input to this thing is 5 volts. So, what was happening was that clipping was just this thing sort of safety shutting off that portion of the signal. Um, I'm using the real leads with uh, set at 10 to 1 and you see a nice beautiful sine wave and peak to peak it is 9.25 volts RMS is 5.8 ish so that is why it was showing up clipped before it's because whenever it got over 5 volts it was just clipping that signal right off So it's, it's a pretty clean wave all the way from about 300 hertz on 
come down to 150 hertz, which, by the way, is exactly what this circuit's supposed to produce, so that's cool. All right, learned a little lesson there. Another good reason to fool around with a $50, $60 scope rather than a $400 one. If I had blown something, I'd be really upset if I'd blown a $400 instrument.